puso at mga kapamilya at mga kapatid wala tayong kinikiling ngayon kundi ang planeta at ang patutuhanan maraming salamat po sa Green Convergence para sa napaka well organized na event at uh, maraming salamat specifically to Dr. Nina Galang for inviting me and giving me such a hard topic Uh, sabi niya, yung email, just talk about the truth in defense of the environment. Oh, napakabigat naman, the truth. I don't want to stand here and, uh, and appear like a, an authority on the truth. Uh, uh, maybe more, maybe that's more for the, the priests and nuns in the audience. But um, I can talk about being a truth seeker. Kasi yun naman trabaho ng journalist. We are truth seekers. But all of you should be truth seekers. All of you are truth seekers. I think that's what brings you here. Our truths about our situation, our truths about our existence. Diba? Climate change is a truth. The environmental crisis is a truth. But there's so many other truths out there that remain to be exposed, that remain to be learned, that remain to be shared. And that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about certain experiences that I've, I've had. I'm going to share some lessons I've learned. Uh, so, I um, ko the truth sa aking title, pero it's a little bit more modest since this is really what we're all struggling with. Uh, lahat naman po tayo ay nasa isang napakalaking information ecosystem ngayon. Uh, we're surrounded by information more than ever. Alam naman natin yan. I, you know, well, we're always multitasking. Dati, when I was starting in journalism, you could easily capture somebody's attention. There's a lot more eye-to-eye -eye contact. These days, there might be eye contact for a moment and then people are looking at their phones. You don't blame them. I'm also like that. Because baka ako mahuli sa balita. Something might happen. A volcano might erupt while I'm talking to you. So I need to be on top of what is breaking all the time. Unfortunately, we can't always trust the information that we're receiving on our phones, that we're seeing on our social media feeds. So, itong information ecosystem na to, in a lot of ways, it's become a swamp. It's become a swamp. Ako po yung Galuzon, Tagalog po po. Swamp sa amin ay kulunoy. Is there a swamp in this area? Is there a word for swamp? So it's in this swamp, sometimes it's very difficult to find out what's true because so much is false. So much around us is false. So um, I'm going to be talking about a few stories I've done and then particular uh, situations that we've been in and some of the challenges that face journalists and all truth seekers today. So, um, may kasabihan kami sa journalism, and especially documentary making, time is true. The more time you spend looking for it, the more time you spend in research, the more time you spend asking questions, the more time you spend investigating, the closer you will get to the truth. Yung tinatawag ng fake news, hindi yan mahirap eh. It's so easy to lie. It's so easy to break propaganda. It's so easy to spread falsehood. Ang patutuhanan, napakahila. It takes a lot of hard work. So that's one of the true reasons. That's one of the truths today. Is the truth is hard work. And the truth can be very complex. Um, I just want to talk about something that's very fresh to me. Uh, it's a story I just did. It's a documentary that aired last Saturday. Okay, but before I go to that, okay, I just wanted to share something about the Philippine situation. We were on a survey a couple of years ago, and it's something I constantly remember. The Philippines, or Filipinos, are among the most ignorant of key issues, but also among the most confident. Imagine that. If you say it, we're among the least informed, and yet we're so confident about what we know. It's a very dangerous situation, Iba. 
Um, well, this survey is a couple of years old. Hopefully it's changed, but considering I think information swamp, maybe it hasn't really changed that much. It is up to people like us. Well, everyone here is an influencer. Kaya kaya nandito eh. Because you volunteered to be here, you initiated some action, you're doing something in your local communities, you're all influencers. And that's why I'm here, is to try to influence the influencers in seeing the environment in a different way, in seeing what you do in your own communities in a different way, and seeing information in a different way, and maybe come up with some insights about how to distinguish truths from falsehoods. All right, so this, this is a blurry image, but it came from a CCTV video. Uh, this is something that happened uh, in Makati, uh, in Luzon. Uh, on February 12th, this is so, so new, and I just, we just aired a documentary about this incident and the insights that came out of it. Now, this is the moment before the impact. Kung makikita nyo, tumatawin yung mga estudyante sa isang pedestrian crossing. And then, nakatigil na tong coaching to, kasi pinatigil niya ng traffic enforcer. Yung driver ng jeep, baka hindi niya nakita yung mga estudyante, nag-overtake, Kasi sanay naman yung ibang driver sa Manila na hindi tumitigil sa pedestrian crossing, hindi siya naka-preno. And he ran over seven of those kids. Seven of those kids. It was a horrifying thing, especially because it was on video. But it illustrated certain truths. But this is, a, this is the headline after, right? The day after. Speeding jeepney kills student hurt seven in Makati. So yun. So again, yung image na yan, a moment of impact. So, kami ng documentary team ko, of course, some of us are also parents of students. Sobra kami na horrified. Naisip kami, sandali. This is indicative of something much bigger. There's a much bigger issue here that Masyado natin ini-ignore all of this time. We're so concerned about big issues. But, but some, that, what happened on that street corner is also illustrate a big issue that we're not really talking about this much. And we're not relating it to everyday tragedies like this. So we investigated. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so what went wrong? Okay, the obvious. Speeding. Reckless driving. And then the infrastructure was also a problem. Walang hump, walang stoplight. Umaasa ang traffic management doon sa traffic enforcer. Madilim. Okay, madilim. And you also have to ask, bakit naglalakad yung mga estudyante pa uwi ng gabi? Why? Because panghapon na yung klase nila at panggabi, gabi na yung dismissal. Bakit gabi yung dismissal? Because sa Maynila, I don't know, the situation is the same in Maynila, overcrowded na yung mga classroom. Kaya nagsishifting. Yung ibang grade sa umaga, yung ibang grade sa hapon, kaya ang uwi ang gabi, kaya napipilitan yung ibang sadyate umuwi ng gabi. Hindi tuloy nakikita ng mga ibang sasakyan at hirap nang sumakay sa gabi. So it's a very complicated problem. It's very easy to blame the driver in this particular case. But if you investigate, there are so many facts related to this particular tragedy that's beyond the driver. And not absolving the driver and motorists, they're a big part of this problem, but there are other aspects of this problem that will only come to light if you ask the right questions and investigate. And this last one, okay. There's foreign sounding signage. My sign, na, Madalas nakikita sa amin. Slow down, pet sink ahead. Napansin namin itong sign, nasa gabi mismo ng zebra lane. So, kung nakita ko to, sabi ng mga ibang kasama ko, alam mo matagal na ako nagtataka kung anong ibig sabihin niyan. Dati alam ang makalo ko, pangalan ng street. Hindi ko nang makita sa ways, hindi ko nang makita sa grab pag nagpapasun. Okay? Uh, you see that all over Manila, okay? Uh, and coming here from the airport, I also saw it in Tagaya de Oro. Use pen 
Sing. Okay. Ang ginawa ko, kinunong ko letrato for my documentary, I went around asking drivers na nakatigil sa stoplight, ano niya bang ibig sabihin ng bed sing? Kung ano nakaalam? <laughs> And it's all over. Ang laki ng gasos ng gobyerno na dyan. It's all over. Is it Chinese? It's a... Of course, I'm sure many of you guess what this means. But why do we have... It's just signage. Competing with attention with billboards and everything. Why do we need to make it so hard? Hindi tuloy naiintindihan ng mga... Kailangan makaintindi. And maaaring may connection yan sa trahedya na gaganap araw-araw sa mga lansangan natin. So, nag-experimento kami. We tried other signing. How about this? Taog muna sa tabi. Anyway, alam, what's pet sing? Pedestrian. Pedestrian crossing is not the name of some Philippine <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> And it's pedestrian crossing. Okay, I remember. But hopefully, mag-face out na yan at gawin na sa local languages natin. In Tagalog, Tawiran. Bakit hindi na pwedeng sabihin Tawiran? And not just that. Sabihin natin sa mga motorista, sandali. Pagdating dito, protektado sa batas ang mga estudyante at lahat ng mga tao. Pag tumuwi dito, dapat hindi yun kayo automatically. Some of you mentioned you visited abroad, talking about overseas experiences. Almost any country you go to anywhere else in the world, pag tumuwi ka sa pedestrian crossing, anong mangyayari? Titigil ang motorista, automatic yan. Sa ibang bansa nga, nakatayo ka lang sa, sa kanto, sa curb. Titigil na yung driver para sa iyo. At saka kung hindi ka tatawid, magagalit. Kaya kahit wala kang bala, tumuwi, mapapatawid ka para mapasaya lang yung motorista. Ganon sila, kalokabining, ganon sila, kapulay, ganon sila, kasimilaris. It shows a civil, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because there are larger truths involved here. Okay, so what are the truths that came out of this investigation of ours? One, street signs can be better. Isipin mo, ginugo pa yung bed scene na yan, may articles 2004 or even earlier, people already complaining about it. Na wala nakakaintindi kung ano yan. 16 years later, nandiyan pa rin yung mga sign na yan at may mga bago. Bakit? Di ba yung tinetesting? Di ba? Di ba pwedeng i-market test? Yung mga okay. By law, motorists must give way in pedestrian crossings, pedestrian surprise. Hinanap namin ang mga batas. There's only one specific law that protects pedestrians. In fact, there are laws that penalize pedestrians for jaywalking, di ba? But there's only one law that protects pedestrians and that's when pedestrians are inside the pedestrian lane. Yung sinasabing PEDC. Doon pa lang protektado. Doon pa lang talaga may karapatan. Kung nag-jaywalk ka at banggain ka ng driver, may depensa pa yung driver. Eh kasi nag-jaywalk eh. Nabag sa batas yan. Di ba? Di ko nakita. Et cetera. Pero pag nasa loob ka ng pedestrian crossing, dapat protektado ka. I'm sorry, I just need to ask. Dito ba sa kagayang de oro? May respeto ng pedestrian sa pedestrian lane? Oh yes, you know, yes. At least there's some mixed response. So may hindi na, kapag talimay mo yan, naka, mag-boo-boo, no. Okay? At least dito may na, yes, diba? Pero pagsulot na ng campus mo. Alright. And why is this related to the environment? Why is this related to the environment? I mean, ano mo, environmental policy, environmental issues, is are all about interconnectedness. Ang lungsod, kasama sa ating environment. There's such a thing as the urban environment. Ano ba? It's the green convergence. But you can have green spaces. You can have safe spaces in cities. So, a key to justice and sustainability is the fair sharing of resources, including space in our urban environment. So, pag nirespeto nyo ang pedestrian, tumatawa it's a pedestrian lane, that is sound environmental judgment. That is in a form of environmental justice because you are sharing space. You are saying, kahit maligit yan, kahit malaki ako, kahit nasasakyan ako, irrespeto ko ang karapatan niya. Because that's the meaning of a just and fair society. Kahit maligit yan, kahit walang power yan, kahit napaka-vulnerable yan, 
kay disable yan, kay matanda yan, etc. etc. Igagalang po ang karapatan niyang tumawin ng pagsara. Sa tamang tanggulang. Okay. Now, that illustrates an even larger truth. In our society, the big and powerful still bully the small. Especially on the streets. Dumumatid talaga mga kid. Itong top top ng mga multinationals, you know, China, United States, contributing to climate change. That's fine, but to a lot of people, those are abstract concepts. But walking on the street is a very personal experience where we experience the same thing. Yung mga manake, yung mga powerful, ay GP driver. Ang GP driver, kahit mahirap sila, pag nasa, nasa paghawag na ng manibela, ha, hari na yan. They have the power over life and death over you. Tulad na nangyari doon kay Jules Villapando, yung 13 years old na napak naman kayo yung incident na yun. Dahil sa reckless driving and GP driver. So, this has nothing to do with being rich and poor. This is all about whether you are in a position of power. If you are in a position of power, whether you're a teacher, etc., etc., kung ang aapi ka, it's the same thing. You're not respecting the rights of the small and powerless. So what solution? Ano yung solution natin dyan? Well, from where I stand, di mga mga gobyerno, I'm not with law enforcement, I'm not a legislator. Ang mga ginagawa ng journalists, ang ginagawa ng mga truth seeker, Patulad natin, patulad ng lahat sa inyo, you're all truth seekers, speak truth to power. If you do that, if you do that every day, I think we will see some change. Ang problema lang, is marami sa atin ay kanimik. Um, and, minsan hindi mo masisisi. Kasi, minsan tahimik because they don't know enough to say Anything. So, the first thing to do before you can speak to, speak truth to power is to find out what the truth is. Otherwise, wala kang masasabi. So, how to get truth seeker? Okay. Many of these are motherhood, motherhood statements. Pero, sometimes you forget. Be curious. Ask many questions. Ako sa totoo lang. Because, lumalabas tayo sa TV. Uh, I'm waiting for a flight to the airport, etc., etc. People come up to me. And, oh, you know, sometimes they want to have their picture taken, etc. But before that, I ask, I try to ask them questions about where they're from, what they do. I don't want to appear like a cardboard figure or piece of furniture. I need to interact with people. So, but it also reflects the reason why I became a journalist, because I'm curious, I like to ask questions, and I know that everyone has a story to tell. Everyone is an interesting personal story, if you ask the right question. So, do that. Over lunch, there, there's so many people here that you don't know. Be curious about them. Ask, ask them questions about themselves and their work, the place where they're from. Right? Just before this, I met a young man who was from San Francisco, Abu San del Sur. I happened to have gone there maybe 25 years ago to do a logging story. I was about to start a conversation with him. Kaso tinawag na ako dito sa stage. Be skeptical. Question assumptions. Huwag kayo basta maniwala. Taas na yun ang kilay. Yung mga nagsasabi ng mga categorical truths na ngayong manang narinig. Doesn't mean you're not believing. It just means, sandali, I'm just withholding judgment. Question your assumptions. If somebody says, oh, nangyari yan, that's a climate change. Sandali. Ganun, ka, ganun ba kapilis yung sea level rise? Listen to scientists. Okay? Uh, of course, our leaders are there to lead. But sa totoo lang, if we only listen to our leaders, we're going to end up confused people. Listen to scientists because they are trained to tell you the truth and to call a spade a spade. Ground truth. Meaning, kahit may maka, kahit makita mo sa maka, 
Kung nagdududa ka, puntahan mo yung lugar. That's what's meant by ground truth. See for yourself. Ako, being a journalist, if I tell you something that's incredible, huwag kayo basta maniwala. Puntahan nyo. Tulad nun, nakita namin yung mga balita tungkol sa mga batang yun, sa kanto na yun. Pinuntahan namin yung kanto. Nag-ground truth kami. Pinausap namin yung mga saksi. Inalang namin yung sitwasyon, yung lugar na yun. That's ground truth. Eh. Provide context. It's not just the who, what, where, when. It's the why. It's the how. It's the so what. Bakit to importante? And, does it have a history? Does this have a history? Everything has a history. Every person has a history. Every family has a history. Every community has a history. So, sometimes in your stories, in your reports, sometimes a paragraph about the history of a particular issue is often enough. Pero ang dahil, madalas kung makita kahit sa balita, there's no historical context, kahit alam mo na meron. Pag alam mo na yung katotohanan, share it. Broadcast it. Tell your friends kung ano yung katotohanan. Why? Because we are, whether we like it or not, we are in a war. We are in a war against falsehood. Ang dami ng kakalat ng kasinungalingan, ang dami ng kakalat ng hindi totoo, nasa dyan. Hindi yan dahil sa human error, hindi yan dahil typographical lang. Hindi. There is a malicious, there are orchestrated efforts, and this is global, to spread falsehood. Kaya tayo mga truth seekers, whether we like it or not, we have to be warriors. Pag alam na natin yung patutuhanan, we have to share it. And, we have to actively oppose falsehood. Call it out, expose it, fact check. There are, you know, sa totoo lang, uh, I'm often asked to speak to at universities, to audiences about so-called fake news, ang sinasabi ko sa mga organizer. Alam mo, ang problema, hindi naman yung mga digital natives, yung mga internet savvy na university audiences. According to studies and surveys, hindi naman yung mga millennials yung nagkakalat ng fake news. They're not the ones mostly sharing fake news. It's their titos and titas and parents and lolos and lolas. Yung mga lumaki sa analog age, katulad ko, di ba? But, you know, I work in media, so I think I'm a little bit more savvy than the typical baby boomer. So I tell university audiences, okay, kung ano yung natutunan nyo ngayon, kung ano yung awareness na kuha nyo ngayon, pag uwi nyo, ikwento nyo sa mga magulang nyo. Imbis na awain nyo sa Facebook, kwentuhan nyo na lang sa dinner table. Because, according to these studies, sila, ang mga salarin. And it's annoying. Sometimes, Ang problema ngayon, you, there are a lot of people who will share falsehood even though it, they know it's false. Why? Why do they knowingly share falsehoods? Because they agree. They agree. What does that show? It means the truth has become devalued. Dati, na, ang pinaka-importanting value, pinaka-importanting virtue ay natuto. Di ba yung tinuturo sa atin? Ngayon, very often, because siguro, because of the influence of social media and the technology, because every individual in this room is super empowered with technology in your hands. Na di devalue yung truth. That, that is an orchestrated global effort to devalue the truth because it makes power easier to seize and maintain. Ano yung kumali as a virtue to the truth? Loyalty. In a lot of situations, in a lot of interactions, people will know the truth. Pero ipabali wala nila. Bakit? Because loyalty, well, to whatever, to an individual, to a leader, to an ideology, to a group, etc., is more important than the truth. And that's another truth about our information ecosystem today. We, it, our traditional values are being distorted. So, once you know the truth, 
Speak truth to power. Speak truth to power. And power is not just politicians, it's not just your local leaders. Yeah, hindi naman sa kanya. Pinakita ko yung sign sa mga dr jeepney driver, tricycle driver, motorcycle rider. You're in power. Pero, igalang mo ako bilang pedestrian. Dahil ako may karapatan dito. That's the truth. And I'm speaking it to you. Lahat tayo, kailangan may ganun attitude. We have to stand up for our rights. Kasi, meron tayong karapatan sa batas. That's the truth. And we need to speak it to whoever's in power who routinely violates it. Okay. So, I'm gonna go back to this uh, sinago kanina. Listen to scientists. Okay. May kasabihan, every disaster movie begins with a scientist being ignored. We are in, unfortunately, we are in the middle of a major unfolding global disaster. It's not even a movie. Okay, um, we're reminded about it every day. So far, the Philippines has been mostly spared, pero kanina, last night, on this morning, sa international news, Every, so many more countries now are reporting COVID-19, coronavirus infections, and even deaths. European countries, that is Puro Asia, Mayon, Iran, Italy, Spain, France, US, etc. There's nobody in you. But you know, it's going out of control. Sana na control to maagapa. There was one scientist, a medical doctor, who in China, Wuhan, so Wuhan, China. Si Li Wenyang. In December, December pa lang, he was already warning his fellow doctors, there's a strange new virus that I'm seeing in patients. We need to be careful. He was warning his doctors, baka may infected sila. Well, gano'n na. Itong si Mr. Li, Dr. Li, na-infect na na. Pero ano nangyari sa kanya noong December? Noong early January yata, Napansin, yung mga warnings niya sa social media. Sinabihan siya ng state government, Uy, huwag ka na magpalak ng ganyan. Bad news yan. Magkakaroon ng mapakalaking national congress ng na Communist Party where all the local Communist Party chiefs need to present good news about their regions. And that's such bad news. Anyway, malik na, issue na naman yan. Huwag ka na Huwag mo na ikalat yan. Pero he persisted. And then he was censored. He was penalized. And eventually, he realized he was also infected in a pit up. A week or two ago, he died of coronavirus. But all over the world, he's now being hailed as a hero who very early on in this real disaster movie, this disaster that's going on, spoke truth to power. But someone like him, wala na pang politika yun. He's a, him, he's a man educated in science. He saw that something was happening. He was warning fellow people of science to be careful. And for that, he was penalized. He was censored. Okay, this is me. <laughs> Naging laman din ako ng balita recently. Uh, fortunately, I'm still alive. Uh, this is, uh, I, live in a, I live in a bamboo house. Uh, in Batangas, um, my family and I, uh, that's my dog, part of our family, see right? Uh, this is our house, made out of bamboo and recycled wood, with a lot of na native trees, parang yung ano, bahay kubo style with a, with a sinong sa baba, na ginawa namin dining area, yung tuluga, it's, it's about, 60% bamboo and about 35% recycled wood from an old house. Anyway, the point is, meron kaming view. We're in the Lake. That's our view. Uh, we're very near the lake shore. Um, on January 12th, may nangyari in our front yard, front view. A volcano erupted. Uh, about this is about 10 kilometers from our house. Nag evacuate kami uh, along with everyone in our community. Nag knock down ang buong bayan namin. It's a closer 
Sedosa dia nanti nego bautingan kami dia nak kekayaki. This is my neighbor, fisherman. He's still gathering his fish. Apa masa sandwich punya? Abang pun untuk kibulkan. Anyway, um, siapa? Um, nung sinabi ng mga scientific ko, mag-iba ang gawin ang lahat. I would say about 95% sumunod. Okay? Kami 10 kilometers away, yung iba 13-14 kilometers away. Nag-evacuate halos lahat. Sumunod kami sa mga scientific ko. They knew what it... Alam mo, uh, yung field walks, saludo kami lahat because hindi nila kinalungan ng politika. Yung mga announcements. Kahit ayaw ng mga local governments, ayaw din ng mga mayor, yung, may, yung mga mayor ng Tagaytay, yung mga senator ng Tagaytay, pinipilit nila, uy, stop, uy, sak, sayang yung negosyo, pagsak yung mga negosyo namin. Sa, sinasabi ng mga scientific, sandali, may mas importante pa sa negosyo nyo. Okay? So they, did, they didn't give any ground to politics and to pressure. So, how does one of casualties? Napakalaking kalamidad, halos walang casualties. Of course, it's not over, under level 2 pa rin kami. But anyway, ito, ginawa na ng mga scientific ko. I just wanted to show you this as a, kind of a, a concrete uh, illustration of what I was talking about. This is a, a map based on some analysis of uh, geologists, seismologists, volcanologists, etc. Ang color coding na yan ay ibig sabihin yan. Kasi baka na, kung nagsundan nyo yung balita, Nagbago yung landscape. May umakyat, nalupa, may bumaba. Okay? Nandito kami. Ano na kung makikita nyo? Okay. Uh, yung umakyat, yung tinatawag na, sabi ng mga volcanologists, uplift. Tumaas yung tubig, tumaas yung lupa, kaya tinan mo yung ibang ilog nag-dry up. Kasi tumaas eh. Tapos, yun ang kulay blue. Ang tawag din ang uplift. Ang kulay orange naman, doon sa eastern side. Nandun kami. Nandun yung bahay namin sa eastern side, sa orange. Bumaba naman ang lupa. Ang ibig sabihin ng orange, bumaba ang lupa. So naisip na, oh my God, nung nakita namin ito, nakaka-evacuate kami. Oh my God, baka lubog na ang bahay natin. Baka lubog na ang property. Kasi ang laki ng binaba ng lupa. Dito naman mataas. So, kahit hindi pa ito kasi emergency, sumilip kami. Well, ako particular, my wife did not go. Just for a few minutes, tinihagin ako ng mayor, sumilip lang, and just to get us some, some belongings, etc. Ito yung nakita. Okay, this is one of our neighbors. I just wanted to show this man, to, to show the scale. No? Ang dating lake shore ay nandito lang sa puti. Dito. So, makikita nyo na sa halip na lumubog yung lupa namin, umagras pa yung tubig. Lumaki pa yung lecture namin. Taliwas doon sa sinasabi ng mapa. The map would show, if you just face it on the map, lubog na kami lahat doon sa eastern side. Pero dahil na ground truth ako, nakita ko, saan nila? Hindi pala umagras. So, kung lumubog yung lupa, bakit aatras ang tubig? That is a big mystery. So, nagtanong-tanong ako sa mga scientific ko. Of course, yung mga local, yung mga fishermen, may mga kung ano ng mga haka-haka. Based on experience, okay, you have to take that into consideration. Pero kinausap ko mga volcanologists. Ang nangyari pala, ganito, bumaba talaga ang lupa namin. Pero bakit umatras ang tubig? It was an environmental issue. Because, okay, this is another shot. Kita mo, yung maikin na portion, dati lubog yan. So, imbis na, pumasok yung tubig, umatras. Okay? This is crater lake before the eruption. Yan yung sumabog. Diyan yung lumabas. Yan ang pinupuntahan. Diyan ang nakikita sa Tagaytay. Diba? Ayan. Island within a lake, within an island within a lake, within a... Yan yun, one of the most famous Philippine sightseeing views in the country. So yan, before the eruption, ano nangyari? 
after the eruption. Okay. Nung sumabog, nung sumabog yung vulkan, nawala na ang tubig. Pati yung ilalim, pati yung aquifer, pati yung underground chamber, nawala na ang tubig kasi nag-evaporate sa sobrang init. Nag-evaporate. So yung ash, may kasamang tubig yun. Kumala. Kumula. Kaya nagpano ng kitla. If you, know, if you remember the videos. So bakit naman taras ng tubig? Because kinigok ng ilalim. Yung crater lake, nag-empty, nagpano ng vacuum, kinigok yung volume lake. Kaya, kahit bumaba ang lupa sa amin, kumuntas pa rin ng tubig kasi kinigok sa ilalim. It's an environmental mystery solved by scientists. Okay. Alright. Another, one final example lang. Ang islam walang lupa. Meron kami nakita sa internet ng mga letrato ng isang barangay sa Manila Bay, sa, sa coastal Bulacan, abandoned na because tumakas masyado yung tubig. Yan. Okay. Yan, simbahan. Ang sinasabi ng iba, wow, ano, effect niya ng climate change. Effect ng climate change. Pero, those of us who follow the issue of climate change know that it's just, the sea level is rising at incremental levels. Ito tumaas siya by more than a meter. Bakit? Hindi yan climate change lang. There are other factors involved. So, nag-imbisti ka kami. Okay, so what happened? Sea level rise? A little bit, but it wouldn't have caused that. Was it a strong typhoon? Yan ang sinasabi ng mga local. Nung binagyo sila, hindi na bumaba yung tubig. Saan nila? Dagat, dagat ito eh. Kahit tumakas yung tubig, huwag ka tapos ng bagyo, dapat bumabalik yan. And then, of course, there's the supernatural, religious, spiritual reason na mula daw yung santo sa loob ng papilya nila and then mula noon ay permanently na sila baha. Kung baga, punishment. Punishment sa community. Okay. But the real reason was subsidence. Okay. Siguro yung mga ibang nag-aral dito ng science, yung geological science, alam nyo kung ano to, di ba? Basically, a sudden sinking of land. And this is happening not just here. Ito medyo dramatic lang. But it's happening all over the Philippines. Why does land suddenly sink in a lot of places in the Philippines, especially coastal areas, na may fish ponds? Sa Bulacan, ang daming fish pond. Anong kailangan ng fish ponds? Anong kailangan ng fish ponds? Tubig. Saan ang gagaling ng tubig? pag fresh water yung mga isla. Hindi sa dagat. Galing yan sa ilalim. Diba? So, paano nangyari yung subsidence? Nearby fish ponds had resulted in overpumping of groundwater creating a vacuum in the aquifer. So, again, karoon ng vacuum sa aquifer. Humina ang aquifer. Hindi na, siya, hindi na niya ma-sustain yung lupa sa taas. Bumagsak yung lupa. Tumas yung tubig. Bumas yung tubig. So if you blame it on all these factors, wala ka nang control. Climate change, sea level rise. Ano pa ito mong gawin locally? Iba ito globally, but actually. Yung bagyo, well, wala ka nang control dyan. May nagnakaw ng patron, well, sana ibalik yung patron, di ba? Pero, yung overpumping of groundwater, kaya pang kontrolin niya eh. Kaya pang kontrolin niya ng NGO, kaya pang kontrolin niya ng mga private fish fund owners eh. Kung alam lang nila, kung alam lang ng local communities kung bakit pinahak yung kanilang lupa. Again, you have to analyze, you have to analyze the problem in a scientific way. Okay, so, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about our campaign. Sa totoo lang, 
Huwag sa malita. Okay. Uh, we talk about fake news, di ba? I'll just end my little talk with just about this campaign. So, uh, we don't like to use, journalists don't like to use fake news because it desecrates the word news. Parang sobrang, itawag doon? Oxymoron ba yun? Yung placing to, news is supposed to be true. Eh, pag nilagay mong fake, baka isipin nyo lahat ng news ay fake. And then yun na nga, fake news is being weaponized by political leaders all over the world pag ayaw nila yung balita. If it's critical to them, tinatawag nila ng fake news, di ba? Di ba? Isa niya, no? Pag ayaw nila yung balita, tinatawag nila ng fake news. And then, of course, local leaders have also adopted that tactic. But this information is intentionally false. So pati yung, pati yung accidental or unintended error ng mga ng journalists ay tinatawag nila ng fake news as if sinadya namin. Misinformation, so there's different between disinformation and misinformation. Misinformation is unintentionally false, usually under by human error. Okay. So there's a difference between disinformation and misinformation. Yung tinatawag natin na fake news, yung sinadya, yung sinungaling, intended falsehood, yun ang disinformation. And that's what, that's, we like to think, that's what fake news really is. Okay, so, uh, example, naging biktima kami. GMA News, may kumalat na ganitong balita. Ginamit yung aming mukhang ano, mukhang totoo, di ba? Uh, very early on, yung Marawi, uh, nung pumuntok yung Marawi, pinagdikta ng si FBR, si, si uh, Lenny Robredo, Loretta Rosales, Dilima, etc. Et et sila raw may pakanak ng Marawi attacks. Okay. So, nung kumalat ito, napansin namin, so let's, so let's, hindi natin pinapos ito, bakit may ganitong kumakalat? So, it was shared over 10,000 times. Baka pa namin napansin. Okay? Just want to show you. This is the real website. Yan ang fake. This is real. So, bakit ginagawa ito? Bakit pinipake pati yung logo namin? Because they take advantage of our own credibility. So, people will share it as if it's true. Kasi there's enough plausibility or believability na, oops, kaya si GMA, so siguro pwede natin ikanan ito. I mean, hindi na napansin na there are differences. No? Okay. But tinan mo, yung URL, very similar. Pati yung URL na, na pinili nila, halos kapareho ng amin. So they are, this is a very, very well done campaign. Okay, so we could not refer to the fake news May pro di ba? Kasi baka lalo pang dumami yung traffic nila o yung eyeballs kung pumunta doon sa fake news. So, nag-issue lang kami ng itong very unsexy, very boring advisory. Paalala mula sa JMA News, merong mga maling balita, kumakala gamit ang URL na kahawi ang JMA News Online. So, you know, this the fake news was shared over 10,000 times. Yung ang advisory correcting or clarifying that it's not ours was shared only 52 times. So, yan na ang malaking problema natin. Yung, kung ano yung falsehood, kung ano yung fake news, madaling i-share. Because especially if you agree with it or if you want to believe it, i-share mo na i-share. And yung correction, hindi yan na-share. Alright. So, hindi lang naman GMA. Okay. CNN, this is... Lahat ng mga uh, credible news organizations or yung established mainstream media, lahat yan may fake news sites. So, just be aware. Tignan nyo yung mga, tignan mo yung ano, URL. Ang totoo, nasa kanan. Ang fake, nasa kaliwa. Tignan, pati URL, eh, parang yung kahawi. Okay, Philippine Star. Tignan mo yung URL. Yung totoo, nasa kanan. Yung, yung hindi totoo, nasa kaliwa. Tignan mo, Bongo Marcos beats the Lima to grab yung head secretary general job. It's unbelievable, pero may nag-share na mga ganyan. Okay, so, kaya nang nagkaroon kami ng kampanya, I think before you click, we've made this uh, mantra that's, we often hear it repeated, and that's, and we started this about 10 years ago. Um, pero, it's, to us, it's more than a matter of thinking. Our problem now is not a matter, it's no longer just a matter of thinking. It's a matter of values. Kasi nga, maraming, kahit alam nila na, hindi totoo, kinakalat pa rin. 
So alam nila eh, na hindi totoo. Kinakalat pa rin. Why? Why do people share fake news? They don't know any better, they're not careful. Okay, fine, there's still a lot of ignorance out there. It was shared by leaders, relatives, or friends. Kaya, just because you're, diba, your friend, your best friend shared it, be skeptical. Diba, be skeptical. Ito pa, they know it's false, but they agree with it so that they share it anyway. They agree with it, they are loyal to whatever or whoever is being talked about in that fake news or disloyal. Kaya na. Alright, so, we have to go back to basics. Tulad sa nabi ko, the truth has become devalued as a virtue. Mas, mas matimba ngayon ang loyalty. doesn't matter what the truth is. If, if this also agrees with my loyalties, so we have to go back to basics. We have to love the truth again. Ulit-ulitin natin to. Love the truth. Love the truth even when it contradicts what you believe. Diba? Kaya, sa scientific method, my hypothesis. That's what you initially believe. But if it's disproven through experimentation, you're willing to change your belief. Because they disprove it. Love the truth even when it goes against what our friends and relatives say. Huwag kayong magpapadala sa mga hindi totoo, mga nagkakala ng hindi totoo. Love the truth so much you will work extremely hard to find it. Yun na, hindi madali ang katotohanan. It takes a lot of effort. Diba? Kanina, sa natin, time is truth. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. And love the truth even when it hurts. Hindi sa masakit. Diba? Sometimes, kahit sa relasyon, diba? Move on, once you find out the truth. <laughs> okay. No, but it applies to a lot of things. Sometimes you find out the truth about someone you respect. You find out the truth about a food that you love. You love to eat. Ngayon, dami ko na kiniwasan ng mga pagkain because I found out the truth about them. Alright, so journalism's essence is the discipline of verification. You know? And I think that's the discipline of every truth seeker. Ito trabaho namin to, but I think as advocates, as environmentalists, even as students, you, we all have our responsibility to be committed to finding the truth, learning the truth, sharing the truth. And you start by investigation, verification of whatever information is out there in the swamp. Finally, may kasabihan ko yung mga mamamahaya, even when your mother tells you she loves you. Very high. Maraming salamat po.